Composting is a natural process that relies on microbes to decompose organic matter. To manage a compost pile efficiently, think of yourself as its good and compassionate overlord. You use seven main tools to nurture your hardworking microbes. Moisture, oxygen, particle size, mixing, temperature, carbon-nitrogen ratios, and pH. Bacteria need water to thrive, but not too much. Moisture promotes microbial growth, nutrient transport, waste removal, and mobility of the microbes, so low moisture levels understandably slow down the composting process. But too much water also slows the process by filling up pore space, which crowds out much-needed oxygen. The ideal moisture level is between 45 and 70 percent by weight, but there's no need to weigh anything. This simple squeeze test works just fine. Grab a few handfuls of compost from different areas in the pile. It should feel damp like a wrung out sponge. If not, add water until it does. If compost is dripping wet, you can add a bulking agent, such as dry wood chips, cardboard pieces, or newspaper strips. If your pile smells bad, it may be too wet. Composting is an aerobic process. That means it requires oxygen. You provide it by managing three main variables. The size of the particles in the pile, the size of the pile itself, and turning or aerating your pile. Proper particle size helps oxygen flow into and through your compost pile. If particles are too small or too compacted, there won't be enough space between them for oxygen to flow adequately. That can happen if you're composting bedding materials with a lot of sawdust. On the flip side, overly large particles can slow the process by limiting the surface area that microbes need to thrive. In composting, pile size does matter. For piles without mechanical aeration, limit the height to 6 feet and the width to 14 feet to encourage airflow through the pile. Turning your compost pile also increases oxygen flow inside the pile and speeds up decomposition in the process. But turning is a temporary fix, so piles should be turned at least three times over a 12 to 18 month composting process. Larger facilities may add a mechanical blower to provide a steady flow of oxygen. Probes generate heat as they decompose, but they don't know when to quit. As benevolent overlord of the pile, you must save your bacteria from themselves. The long-run optimal temperature for a compost pile is between 95 and 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures above 150 degrees will severely limit the composting rate, but you need not micromanage temperatures. A compost pile may often go above 131 degrees early in the process. Temperatures above 131 for three days help kill harmful bacteria and pathogens, and temperatures above 145 degrees Fahrenheit can kill many weed seeds. If temperatures decline below 110 degrees Fahrenheit early in the process, something may be wrong. You may have too little oxygen, too much or too little water, or too little nitrogen. Your pile also might be too small. Piles should be a minimum of 4 feet wide, 4 feet long, and 4 feet high to generate required temperatures. As the pile matures, the temperature will tend to drop, so it's your job to keep it in range. Turning your pile will rejuvenate microbial activity and increase temperatures again. Once your compost pile settles below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it's probably close to done. If turning the pile does not raise the temperature, your compost is a finished product. To take the temperature of your pile, use a probe that reaches deep into the pile and leave it in long enough for the reading to stabilize. Take readings from several locations at various depths from both the top and the sides. Good compost overlords actively manage carbon and nitrogen ratios, a key measure of compost nutrient content. In your pile, carbon is an energy source that drives microbial growth. However, carbon is constantly escaping because carbon dioxide is released in the composting process. To compensate, you need to actively blend materials to maintain CN ratios. Aim for a CN ratio of between 25 to 1 and 40 to 1. If the CN ratio gets too high, your pile will decompose slowly and unprofitably. The flip side, if you add too much nitrogen, bacteria may find energy producing carbon in short supply. Caution! Not all carbon sources are created equal. 
You want to provide materials that bacteria can readily use. Woody material, for example, is more difficult to decompose than material containing simple sugars such as fruit waste. Bacteria can readily decompose most nitrogen sources, but some animal parts such as hair and feathers containing keratin are exceptions to that rule. For materials that resist decomposition, grind them into smaller pieces and mix them throughout the pile. Generally speaking, compost microbes tend to thrive best in a pH range between 6.5 and 8.0, but different bacteria and fungi work best at different pH levels. Although composting rates will slow beyond the optimal range at certain pH levels, the compost process self-corrects pH, so you often need not actively manage it. In the early days of the process, pH may drop to 4.0, but towards the end of the process, pH often settles in at the 7.5 to 8.0 range. If your mix includes too much nitrogen, you may see pH rising as nitrogen-rich material is converted to ammonia. That further increases alkalinity. This will reduce the composting rate and your pile may lose nitrogen as ammonia volatilizes off. A slightly basic pH also may help with odor control. 